Bitcoin bounced beautifully over the weekend and we've had some very bullish news. I don't want to waste your time. Let's dive right into it. Happy Monday, everyone. I'm Scott Melker, also known as the Wolf of All Streets. And today we're going to be talking about all of the news that matters in the crypto market. But first, I need to ask you to subscribe to my channel and hit that like button, that little thumbs up down below and help more people to see this channel and to see this video. Now, once again, there's so much news that happened over the weekend and today, and I want to dive right into it and discuss what I think is happening with Bitcoin in the crypto market as a result. But first, I want to dive into something that's actually not necessarily about crypto. It's about legacy markets, the stock market in particular. Here you can see the headline, unprecedented Wall Street ponders Goldman's block trade spree. Now, if you guys were paying attention at all to what was happening in the stock market, this was huge news. Here it says, as Wall Street speculated on the identity of the mysterious seller behind the massive $10.5 billion in block trades executed on Friday by Goldman Sachs Group, investors also pondered just how unprecedented the sell-off was and whether there's more to come. We've never seen anything like this in the stock market before. These were absolutely massive, huge trades of a few stocks, and there's caused tons of speculation as to why it happened. This caused stocks and companies that are huge to drop 30, 40, 50% at some point during trading as a result of these massive trades. Now, there's some bad takes about this. It was not Goldman Sachs selling their own stock. They were facilitating the sale in these block trades. There's been a lot of speculation that perhaps it was a huge quant fund that blew up and needed to sell to cover. But regardless, what's interesting here is that much like the crypto market, it's important to remember that there are still whales who can make huge waves in any market, even one as big as the stock market, right? If one huge player decides to sell a ton of stock, then much like an illiquid altcoin, you will see price drop and massively. And now people obviously speculate, hey, what could this do to the Bitcoin and crypto market? Well, Bitcoin is up and it's doing nothing because any big brain Chad like myself knows that there's no correlation between stocks and Bitcoin. It is a beautifully uncorrelated asset. Next, we have one of my favorite stories. Miami-Dade commissioners approved crypto exchange FTX's bid to rename Miami Heat Sports Arena. Now we know that this was in the works, but it's nice to see that it was actually approved by the commissioners. Of course, there was one hater, Rene Garcia, but uh, irrelevant. The vote went through. It's going to be absolutely epic and amazing to see a name like FTX on an arena in the NBA. And this only further solidifies Miami as the home of cryptocurrency in the United States. It's really the new Silicon Valley, it would appear. What's interesting here is that this huge deal, $135 million, will reap about $90 million in net proceeds during the 19 period, or about $4.7 million annually. And commissioners, if you watch the meeting, got very emotional because they'll be using this money to help stop gun violence, which is a big problem in Miami. So this really could be a huge boon for the people of Miami as well, and not just for cryptocurrency. Next, Bitcoin at inflection point as fiat debasement rises, Soros Fund Management CIO. Investment banker Don Fitzpatrick said the private investment fund is putting money into cryptocurrency infrastructure. Now, it's interesting. Obviously, you can have your opinion on George Soros. It's irrelevant. What is of note here is that once again, huge money is recognizing that there's a major problem with printing money and future inflation and is making their bet on Bitcoin to hedge against this. As you can see here, the CIO of Soros Fund Management, Don Fitzpatrick, thinks Bitcoin is no longer a fringe asset. She says this is due to growing fear over fiat currency debasement. She added that the firm is investing in cryptocurrency infrastructure. Absolutely huge to see these big names and this big money coming into the space for the very reason that we know Bitcoin is important. Next, digital currencies jump as Visa pilots crypto settlement. I love that headline because literally nobody is trading or buying Bitcoin because of the Visa news, but the Visa news does still remain bullish. Bullish. I just love seeing these pundits and talking heads try to make false equivalencies about why the price of Bitcoin is moving. Now, just last week, 
I reported that the CEO of MasterCard said he's not interested in Bitcoin at all, mildly interested in stable coins, but really not interested in crypto. So Visa went, and said, went ahead and said, hey, buddy, hold my beer and uh, are now adopting stable coins and testing them for their settlements. This is absolutely huge. We know that it's all coming and that cryptocurrency is the settlement protocol of the future. Stable coins will be used by big banks and by companies like Visa for superior settlement of transactions. Now what the hell's an NFT? Apparently cryptocurrency. Everyone's making so much money. Can you please explain what's an NFT? Everyone saw the Saturday Night Live skit where they talked about NFTs and I could not help but fight that little devil on my shoulder that was screaming, top, top, NFTs are at the top. I think it's quite, quite clear. Even the biggest names like people have said that NFTs are absolutely in a bubble. That does not mean that they don't have value. That does not mean that they are not the art of the future. That does not mean that non-fungible tokens do not have insane use cases that we will see. But when you see NFTs go from this nascent small thing to Saturday Night Live in a matter of months, uh, it's time to take caution. So I think that a lot of the things that are selling for exorbitant prices just because they are NFTs will probably go to zero and people will lose quite a bit of money and we will see that all of the cream will rise to the top, the real art and the quality will be what we want to see. Regardless, you should check out the skit. It was pretty funny. Son, I didn't understand a word you just said. And lastly, I want to talk about a tweet that I sent this uh, weekend that set Twitter absolutely on fire with terrible hot takes and responses that really just had me absolutely shocked. Here was my simple tweet. Bitcoiners and shitcoiners, it's time to get along. We are all on the same team. Seemed innocuous enough to me. I was just saying, hey, guys. You know, we're all on the same team. We all want to fight against legacy systems. We all, all want the ability to opt out. You know, maybe Ethereum is the internet of the future and Bitcoin is digital gold and maybe DeFi is how we finally replace the banks. But no, 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 no. Do not dare try to bring people together in the crypto community. Now, yes, I could have used altcoiners instead of shitcoiners. But honestly, I didn't get much pushback for that. I think that that's a term that is, uh, you know, affectionately used by altcoiners and shitcoiners themselves. I don't think that was a big deal. What was surprising to me was how much this triggered the Bitcoin maximalists. Now, I think all of us have a little Bitcoin maximalist in us. I would say I'm like 80% Bitcoin maximalist. If you go on 23andMe, you know, you, you do your uh, DNA, you find out that you're like 5% Neanderthal. Well, I think all of us have a little bit of Bitcoin maximalism in us. Most of us a lot. But this triggered them on a level I, I really don't understand and couldn't comprehend. And it really uh, brought to light for me just how separated and tribal this community is. And, and what was even worse is that the takes, I and mean, we're talking about from really famous people here that, that rung in on this conversation, the takes were just sweeping generalization after sweeping generalization. Bitcoiners want this. Shitcoiners want this. And we all know that you can't just group everyone together. It's absurd. It's tribalistic and it's really damaging. So, you know, I, I was very entertained and surprised by the responses, but it was also a bit disheartening because I do truly believe that all of us are on the same team and working generally for a common goal, even if we disagree on how to get there. And frankly, I think that most of us have a little bit of Bitcoiner and shitcoiner. In us. That is all the news that is moving the markets today. Thank you once again for tuning in. Please subscribe and hit that like button and I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.